Hello everyone, and a very warm welcome back to the Playing Guy with me, the Playing Guy. You are all very warmly welcome back to the channel, whether you are new or a returning subscriber. And today we are here in the Aerosoft A330, and I have decided that we are going to do a Colin Dot tutorial in this aircraft. Now obviously this plane has just been uh, released, I've been flying it for at least uh, just over a week or so now, and I have to say I really do enjoy it despite the fact there is one or two slight issues with with the aircraft. So with that being said, let's head straight into the cockpit and uh, yeah, I'll show you how you do a uh, cold and dark in this girl. So here we are in the cockpit of the Aerosoft A330 and as you can see, it is a beautifully rendered rendition of the uh, real thing. Uh, Aerosoft have done a uh, very, very good job with this. Now for us today, we are Echo Charlie Mike Hotel Lima and Air Europa, Air Europe, whatever you want to call it, Airbus A330. On stand Tango 5 here at Madrid Balajas, and we're going out towards Barcelona as a 7701. So, without further ado, uh, let's get into this and I'll show you how to do a con dark. So, the first thing you're going to notice is that when you load up the aircraft, it's going to be in a default state. Quite simply, all you need to do is come down here to the pop up MCDU menu, or failing that, you can uh, activate the 2D panel. Quite simply, all you need to do with that is just uh, click on the top left portion of either pilot's MCDU to give you the pop-up version in 2D, as you can see there. But for me, I like to use the 3D uh, one on the lower pedestal, so we'll use that. So all you simply need to do here is click Aircraft State, and then all you need to do is press Cold and Dark. Very simple. Now, upon putting the aircraft into Cold and Dark, uh, we need to get some power on the airplane. So we're going to go ahead and turn our batteries on. First thing you want to do is make sure we've got good voltage on uh, both bats, and as you can see we have around about 27 volts. That's perfectly fine, usually it's around 24 volts that I'll sort of experience problems. So uh, yes, we're all okay, and we can flick these two on. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to get some AC power on the airplane. There's two ways we can do this. We can have some external power, and this should automatically be available with the cold and dark option. And you see there that's available, so we can simply flip that to on. Or just in case you want to use the APU, then just to explain that a little bit further, uh, what you want to do is you want to carry out a fire check. But just keep in mind when you do carry out a fire check, uh, we will get the agent squib and uh, this um, disc light, whatever that means. Sorry, discharge light, I had to think then. So yeah, as you can see there, we will get the uh, squib and discharge light uh, illuminate there. But uh, because we do not have AC power yet, then the uh, push button will not light up. And neither do we have any of the screens, neither will we get any ECAM actions. But that's totally fine. So once you've carried out the fire check, you can go ahead and you can flick the APU to on if you want to use that uh, straight away for AC power. But for us today, we're going to use the GPU. Like so, that's enabled. And at which point, uh, all of our screens now will go into a self-test sequence with a maximum of a 40 second startup time. As you can see, it's quite self-explanatory. So the next thing I'm going to show you now is the options panel. So just in case you want to set some certain things up with the aircraft, uh, you can do that. Uh, for me, I like to have the checklist on, but if you're going to have that on, I recommend you have view focus off. Also on aircraft, you can uh, enable uh, your weights if you want auto rudder tiller. So yeah, you can have a look around here. You can set up things however you would uh, like to do so. Now, uh, next thing I want to show you is actually how we perform a battery check, because obviously you want to make sure that your batteries are discharging. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up the electrics DC page, like here, and I'm going to go ahead and turn off the batteries and make sure they are discharging. And as you can see here, the indications are off, so that's all good. Now if you want to, you can actually leave the batteries off. A few airlines do this when on stand, because uh, obviously it saves wear and tear on them. I uh, know American Airlines, they like to do it, and quite a lot of other airlines besides. So yeah, if you want to go ahead and just leave those off, you can do, but make sure you do turn them on before start. And it's also important to note as well, when the uh, interactive checklist uh, goes off, which I'll be showing you a little bit later on, by default they will turn these two on, so you might have to skip that item. But for me today, by default, I am going to leave these two on like so so with that being uh, completed we now can perform a safety checklist uh, safety check even so this is just making sure that the aircraft is safe so the landing gear is down we have three greens the wipers yeah you want to go ahead and check those uh, they're off uh, the throttle uh, yeah that's at idle and the engine mo uh, engine masters are set to off and that the engine mode selector is set to normal 
So, in this specific scenario, as you can see, we actually have ending indications. Now, that shouldn't be happening when it's on normal, but I think this is a slight bug with the Aerosoft A330. So, in order to reset that, just flick it over to IGN Start, and then flick it back to normal. And as you can see there, that's how the indications should look. Now, for me, also, something I like to do as well is I like to just check there's not a problem with my throttle. So, as you can see there, full free of movement on the throttle, it's all well and good. So having completed that, we can now go ahead and perform a check on the oxygen. If you want to do it on the uh, co-pilot side, you can do. But I don't personally like to. And I'll also go ahead and complete the fire check. Now quite simply, what's going to happen when we do the fire check is you should get the squib and discharge lights on both agents and the fire push <coughs> buttons. And this goes for both the APU and the engines. And we should also get the relevant ECAM actions. And on the fire check for the engines, these should light up with fire. So let's go ahead and do that. You see, we have the fire push button, uh, squib discharge lights, and the ECAM actions. Yep, that's totally fine. Same thing with the engine. So we have engine one fire, and the fire lights. Yep, that's all well and good. So with that being completed, we now can go ahead and complete some preparations with our overhead panels. So next thing we're going to do is going to align our ideas. Now take into consideration that the way they are installed on this aircraft is 1, 3 and 2. But the way you should set it up is 1, 2 and 3. So quite simply, you just want to put it to nav on backlight. That's very good. Once they're out, uh, you can go ahead and do it with your second system, like so. And your third system. That's all good. So then what I like to do here is I like to complete initial preparations on the overhead panel. So I'll turn on the uh, communication stack here. Uh, fueling, I generally leave the fuel pumps too off because I may actually want to get uh, refueled by a GSX. So for me, I just leave that off for the time being. Same thing with that, I'll also leave the seatbelt signs off as well because you're meant to have those off when you're refueling. In the meantime, I can arm the emergency exits. Mm, I'll turn on the... No electrical device to switch. Uh, you can also set up some lights as well, however you want to. As you can see here, we've got some dome. We've got some central lights. So you can set those up however you would like to. Now you want to put your strobe lights onto automatic and your nav and logo lights onto automatic as well. Or position number one. Now, after completing that, quite simply, uh, what you can now do is you can come down to your lower pedestal. And what I like to do is I like to just check some various things, obviously, uh, with the engine, so making sure... Uh, sorry, I like to check various things with the aircraft, so I'm just making sure that uh, everything is okay. That there's nothing that uh, is particularly bad. I'll also check the status page as well, and the recall. Make sure that there's nothing uh, out of the ordinary there. Right, that's all good. Uh, next thing I'll do is I'll turn on my uh, radio panel, like so. Uh, if you want, you can set some of your internal lights here. It's entirely up to you how you want to do that. I'll also set the parking brake as well. Now, because we are on shocks, we don't actually really need the parking brake, but it is a part of the interactive checklist thing. So I recommend that you do have it. I'll also set up my um, camera for the door. Obviously, we don't want to make sure that someone is coming in who doesn't have... Uh, Authorised access to the cockpit, but generally in this stage of flight, it's only really us and the cabin crew. So I like to always leave the door in unlock. It's join. It's when the engines are started that you really need to have the door in the uh, locked mode. Okay, so uh, next thing we can do now is we can go over to our FMCG. Uh, you want to go to in it, but before doing that, you want to confirm that the engines are correct. Uh, for us today, they are Trent uh, 772s. A little bit inaccurate because I believe uh, Air Europa use uh, CF6s but uh, this is how the Aerosoft A330 comes so don't worry about that so next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in initially where we're going from and where we're going to now this reminds me of a very handy feature you can have on this aircraft that I'd like to show you so if you want to head on over to your EFB go over to docs and uh, as you can see we've actually loaded in our document from Simbrief which is uh, very good it's slightly out of date but it uh, doesn't matter for this uh, demonstration so yeah, that is very handy in case you don't want to use something like your iPad or an external laptop or you want to be minimising P3D or anything like that to uh, to get your charts. Very, very nice feature that. So for us today, we are Lima, Echo, Mike, Delta, 2, Lima, Echo, Bravo, Lima. And uh, next thing you want to do is you want to put in your cost index. So for us today, that is 42. 
and we'll be up at flight level 300. Now you should actually put in the temperature at that altitude. Uh, for me, I'm not going to bother with that today. And as you can see, it's gone in a standard ISA. But obviously, it's very rare that it's actually on ISA, so you want to put in your actual temperature. And for us, the call sign is 55 Echo Hotel. So that's all gone in very nicely. Now the next thing you want to do now is you want to go on over to your fuel predicament page and you want to put in some uh, information, in particular your block fuel. Uh, today we need 12.7, uh, I'm actually going to round that up to 12.8, so you want to stick that in, whatever your block fuel is in metric tons. Now at which point after completing that, what you can then go off and do is you can go over to uh, your load and fuel options and you can go ahead and load this in. Now, firstly, what I'm going to talk about is the fuel, because there's a few different ways in which you can actually put the fuel onto the airplane. So, if you want GSX to do it, quite simply, all you need to do is put in the figure like so, and then call for GSX, like that. Now, uh, while we're on the topic of GSX, I'm actually going to go ask catering, but you can set that up however you want to and call for it whenever you want to. It's entirely up to you. Now, obviously, just in case you do not have GSX, uh, then what you can do is you can go ahead and hit fuel and that uh, will just automatically start uh, fueling up the plane so you'll see that indication go up. Now in order to get a load sheet, because I do find this is a little bit tricky especially if using stuff like GSX and a refueling system uh, the best thing to do, which I find, is the following so 12.8 uh, fuel there, cargo today 6.1 and we have 261 passengers so what you want to go ahead and do is you want to just enter all that information and hit instant. And as you can hear, we have got our load sheet. Very nice. So obviously uh, what a load sheet does is it just uh, essentially gives you all the weights and lots of other important information as well, like the fuel, as you can see there. So as you can see for us today, we have a zero fuel weight of 155.3, which uh, is within limits and is actually under from what we've planned. So yeah, you just obviously want to go ahead and check that off via your SIM brief documentation. Make sure obviously everything uh, is within limits. So as you see there, we have planned for a zero fuel weight of 160. And we actually have a zero fuel weight of 155. So that's under. So from performance point of view, that's all good. So yeah, you want to go ahead and you just want to go and uh, check that all off. So after completing uh, that, what I'd like to go ahead and do now is update my zero fuel weight and my zero fuel weight CG on my uh, fuel uh, predicament page. Quite simply, all you need to do with that is click on the top right LS key or LSK key even. And then there you'll have the figures. So all you need to do is go ahead and copy that in. Very good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and complete the checklist. Now I really do like this checklist. It's a very, very good feature to have. But then also do keep in mind that it may be necessary to skip one or two items down to how you've already prepped the cockpit. So I ask you please to pay particular attention to this feature if you are going to, if you are planning on using it. Cockpit preparation checklist. Engine master. Both off. Weather radar, power supply, wind shear. And also whilst uh, the checklist is happening, I just want to show you a very Landing quick feature. Now, Checked. you don't have to bother mucking about with uh, the doors Batteries. on this aircraft. Both it's on. got a, Electrical it's very power. heavily synced with GSX. So, as you see there, the doors are open automatically. ABU so you don't have to test. muck about with that. Checked. Ecam recall. Checked. Flaps. Checked position. Speed brake lever. Checked retracted. Parking brake. Yep, they're just making sure that Set is on. on. Now we have good pressure. Accu brake pressure. Checked. And of course, if that has not been uh, turned on, supply. then they'll uh, do that for you. Cockpit voice recorder. Set on. Ground proximity warning system. On. Flight control system. On. Adheres. Yeah, and just in case you Checked. haven't sorted them out, they'll go ahead and do that for you automatically. Navigation lights. Checked. So yeah, if you put those into number two position, Cabin the checklist will sort of stall. So that's why I leave it as is. 
And now, because we have finished refueling, you can go ahead and we can turn on the seatbelt signs. But as you, as you can see Kevin there, the checklist has got a little bit stuck, so you can just go ahead and skip that. Emergency lights. Checked and armed. Anti-ice. Off. Probe window heat. Auto. Air condition. Checked. Electric panel. Checked. Fuel pumps. Now, as you can see here, they go ahead and turn in all these on, which is perfectly Set fine on. for us. Uh, refueling has been finished. However, Fuel if you are getting GSX checked. refueling, uh, you may need to override this Engine and leave the test. fuel pumps off. Number one and two. And yeah, they can uh, recomplete the fire checked. checks. Ventilation panel is checked. Anti skid on. Radio management panel on. Weather radar gain mode checked. Thrust levers idle. Engine mode selector checked normal. ATC mode system altitude reporting checked. TCAS checked standby. Oxygen mask test. Okay, now this is one of these things where the chalice can get a little bit stuck, in my opinion. So you want to wait for the hiss. After you've heard the hiss, you want to open up the uh, panel on yourself and do an additional check. And you see it will close, checked. and the chalice will continue. Flight director on. Checklist complete. All right, that's all good. The checklist has now been complete. So I'm actually going to go and ask for boarding now. So one of the things I've just noticed is that the door, yeah, that should not be open. So just in case you are having uh, one or two problems with the doors and you want to open them manually, simply go to doors and then you can open and close them as you wish. But then, like I say, obviously, um, say if you're on a remote stand, you have... Um, Three stairs on door, one left, two left, and four left, then obviously GSX will open them automatically uh, for you. Okay, so with that being said and done, we can now move ahead and complete our preparation on our MCDU. Okay, so we can now go ahead and we can go to flight plan, and we can uh, go ahead and pop all this in. So, Lima Echo Mic Delta, obviously that's where we're going from. In order to get the SID on that, quite simply you need to click it, you need to hit Departure. And obviously it's very, very helpful having the charts here, because we can uh, see which uh, route we're taking today. So for us today, it is one for right Departure on the Pinar 2 Bravo. One for right Pinar 2 Bravo. Very nice, and obviously if you want to go ahead and check all these out via distances and stuff like that, you can do, I'd recommend you do, but for me today I'm not going to be doing that, because uh, quite simply it can take ages, but it's entirely up to you whether or not you want to do that. So we are Upper November 870, and we're going to Papa Uniform November, oh sorry, Papa Oscar November. That's why it's important you do check. Papa, Oscar, November, Echo, November. Like so. Now, just in case you ever want to delete something here, quite simply, all you need to do is hit clear, and then hit on the appropriate waypoint that you want to get rid of. It's as simple as that, really. And also, you're going to notice that you do have some flight plan uh, discontinuity errors. And I'll also show you a little bit later on how we get rid of those. So, from Ponen, it is Uniform Tango 600 to <coughs> wherever that is, I cannot pronounce it to save my life. And obviously, as you can see here, in order to be able to uh, get certain airways uh, on, what you need to do is you need to hit the appropriate waypoint, head on over to airways, go uniform, tango, 600, or whatever airway you're using, and you can go ahead and you can type all that in. Now, I do feel this is a bit more of a kerfuffle than on Boeing planes, but it's just how it is. So as you can see there, that's all gone in like so. Now just in case you do have a direct waypoint, uh, in this situation, let's just pretend it is, uh, I don't know, it's quite a far away waypoint, but let's just pretend it's Ockham. 
So all you simply need to do is just go in like that. Simple. And like I say, in order to get rid of it, all you need to do is hit clear. Now, because uh, it's quite a short flight, so I'm also going to put in the arrival as well. And it's the Caspian, uh, Caspi, whatever you want to call it, 2 November for zero 02. So, ILS, oop. So you want to hit Lima Echo Bravo Lima, or your destination, you want to hit Arrival. And then obviously you want to scroll down until you find the appropriate uh, runway with the appropriate approach. And then also you want to find the appropriate star, and for us we'll use that one, like so. And you're also going to notice a few flight plan discontinuity errors. Quite simply what you need to do with that, as you can see here, is from you need to go over to this waypoint and type in your next one. So for us it's Charlie India 02 like so, hit insert and that will sort itself out for you very very simple and also if you want to as well you can uh, cycle over your flight plan on your navigation display all you need to do is you just need to put this knob here to plan you need to bring up your panel and so your MCDU panel and as you can see here you can have a quick overview very nice but then also you can set up this panel however you want so if you want to fly on nav you can do if you want to fly on arc it's up to you if you even want to fly on plan it's up to you which, like I say, it's entirely up to you. This aircraft is very, very customizable, and uh, you can pretty much set it up however you would like. So uh, now, with that actually being complete, I'm now going to go and head on over to the takeoff page. What you want to do is you want to hit Perth. You want to look for this, the uh, takeoff uh, runway page. As you see, it says one four right, and it's asking for your V speeds. Now, quite simple. All you need to do on this section here, where it says flaps and THS, is you want to put in your flap setting, which for today is flap one, but you always want to put it as flap dash one up. So if you need to use flap 2 up, then quite simply all you need to do is put in uh, flap 2 up, like so. It's very, very simple. And then you just want to input that here. And as you can see, the majority of the data is already inputted. So flap 1 up, uh, 0.8 on the trim. Flex to temp is 54 degrees. Now that's our takeoff D rate. Obviously, uh, in a Boeing, if you're used to flying them, obviously all you do is just put that number in, you set TOGA and that will automatically set the D rate. Uh, for us what we need to do with that in order to set D rate is we actually need to put the throttles to flex on takeoff like that. And it will uh, assume 54 degrees. So yeah, very very simple. Uh, also you can put in your transition altitude as well. I'm not too sure what it is out of here uh, in Madrid but we'll just assume it's 13,000. But just in case you need to change it all you simply need to do is just go ahead and do something like that. I can see that is very very simple. So with that your preparations on the MCDU are complete. So what's the next thing you can do? Well for me at this stage I like to go ahead and perform a light check on the aircraft. You can do that like this and as you can see uh, the aircraft is lit up like a Christmas tree and really what we're doing here is we're just checking make sure that all the bulbs are working and that uh, none of them are out. So the next thing also you can do after that is if you want you can go ahead and you can set your air conditioning up. Uh, for me I'm happy as it is so I'm just going to leave that. Uh, then if you're on VATSIM you can go ahead and set your comms up. Uh, for me we're not actually on VATSIM today. Uh, but for me I generally always leave the comm at 1 to 2 a. It's a uh, force of habit. So for me what I'm also going to do now is I'm actually going to go ahead and just request boarding. Uh, for me I should have done it before I actually uh, mucked about with the MCDU. Because obviously it can take a while on this aircraft, so please do keep that in mind. But nevertheless, uh, we'll just call for that now. Now, one of the things I'll do now is I'll also set up the autopilot panel. Now, for us, I'm just going to assume that we cannot go above uh, 13,000 feet on this SID. So I'm just going to go ahead and set that in. Now, other than that, by default, obviously the speed and heading, uh, they're obviously um, pretty much set for automatic. So whenever you see the uh, heading mode pretty much in this, it's pretty much the LNAV function. And the speed, obviously, that is its automatic function as well. So obviously on takeoff, because uh, we are in Europe, we can't go above 250 knots uh, as soon as I put the power uh, into climb mode, which is sort of like automatic thrust then obviously the speed will maintain 250 knots pretty much FMC speed or MCP speed uh, if you're in a Boeing and as you can imagine like I say that's is all very much uh, very very uh, simple to get used to now uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start up the APU uh, mainly because we're going to need that for the startup and we also need some uh, AC power as well other than the GPU because obviously we can't push back with that so we'll go ahead and we'll turn that on. Quite simple all you do is you put on the master switch then you hit start and I'll also open up the APU lead as well so we can use uh, 
bleed air from the APU to start up the engines. Now, quite simply, what you can do from that point is head on over to APU, and then you can monitor the startup. Now, whilst that's doing that, uh, a very nice feature of this aircraft, which I'd like to show you, is the AOC menu. Now, in order to get that up, what you need to do is you need on head up is you need to head on over to the ATSU, hit AOC, and what this is going to do is it's going to enable you to get uh, your weather printed off for you, which is uh, very very accurate. Uh, if you're using something like Active Sky, which I tend to find, and it's also very realistic as well. I really think it's quite quirky getting all the printed off pieces of paper, like you just saw earlier with the load sheet. So we'll uh, go ahead and uh, sell up this page. First thing what you want to do is you want to hit in it so it gets the flight numbering correctly. This is the fuel page, you want to send it off to the company, you'll hit send, like so. Fuel, uh, for me I'll send this off, for me I don't like to put the volume in. If you want to print that off you can do, Hello. like so. And this here is your fuel report. Okay, so the next thing uh, we're going to do now is we're going to request some weather, so we'll hit departure ATIS. And we can also request some uh, weather for Barcelona as well. So all you really need to do is you just need to press this and uh, that sends a message off to the company saying, hello, we need some uh, weather. And that should then come up on the received messages. So in order to get that, hit print all. And that will give you your weather, which we'll now go ahead and set up. So for us here, the wind is 2105. Uh, we might be better off using another runway. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, don't worry about that. This is only a demonstration flight. I'm not really trying to be highly realistic. But obviously, tuning in uh, VATSIM, if you're on VATSIM on the ATIS, that will obviously tell you which one way you should use. But uh, yeah, let's not worry about that today. Uh, the visibility is all the nines. That's very good. Uh, view is few clouds at 3,000 feet. Scattered at 4,000 feet. The temperature is 12 degrees, so we're not going to need icing today or de-icing even which is very good and the QNH 1006 so we can set up the QNH 1006 alright that's all great and what I tend to do now is I'd actually go ahead and hit print on here and this will actually give me some data for the takeoff so for us today uh, when it comes to the takeoff uh, runway condition is dry the outside air temperature is 12 degrees wind 2105 QNH 1006 takeoff Gross weight 167.7, the bleeds are on, flaps one up, and like I say, it's a very quirky feature, you don't have to use it, but I really do like using that. So, with that being all said and done, you're pretty much almost ready to go. Uh, what I do at this stage of the flight is I'll just go ahead and check my SIGMET, uh, which we can do here. Uh, make sure everything is okay with that, and I'll also get things uh, sorted out via that sim, so I'll make all for clearance. Now, please do keep in mind that this flight plan is approximately uh, out of date by a couple of hours. Uh, or even a day, I'm not entirely sure, but regardless, um, yeah, just please take that into consideration. Yeah, so as you can see here, we do have a little bit of weather we may need to take into consideration. So from surface level up to 180, we have some moderate icing with some light turbulence, okay. So it's very, very important that you do check that because it will actually impact uh, your decisions. Now, theoretically, we should uh, actually have anti-icing on from takeoff, but then uh, we're not really going to be hitting any visible moisture till about 3,000 feet. So we could actually leave that off to help us a bit with performance. So with that all being said and done, we're pretty much uh, almost ready to go here. So uh, I'll talk to you once we have uh, finished boarding. Okay everyone, so uh, boarding has nearly been complete. We've just got one last ULD just going in the rear. But what we can do now is we can, uh, yeah, start prepping for pushback. So the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that your ground power is off. Uh, quite simply, all you need to do is just push it and uh, it's disconnected. And then you also need to go over to your ground services and you want to also disconnect it via that as well. Now the Back reason complete and the aircraft's clear. that you... Um, first turn it off then disconnect it is that if you try and get rid of the GPU when it's still connected that can cause some problems alright so believe you me you want to make sure that you have first disconnected it okay now if you want you can also get rid of your traffic cones as well obviously you want to make sure your parking brake is set because I think the ground crew are taking the wheel trucks out by now uh, next thing I also recommend doing is uh, considering about whether or not you want to get some de-icing now the reason I say this is that say if we do need de-icing uh, we'll say, oh, you know, 
ATC, yeah, can we push back? And then, oh, I forgot about the icing. And then obviously that can take about 10, 15 minutes to do. And at some airports, uh, you really need to push back when you have just asked for the clearance. So, yeah, please do keep that in mind before asking for pushback clearance. So, obviously, uh, yeah, uh, if you need to go ahead and get de-iced, uh, you can go ahead over to GSX and, uh, yeah, see if, uh, see if that is an option. Now, for us today, we're at 12 degrees, so obviously uh, we're not going to need it. And I've checked the uh, conditions as well. Like I say, we do not need it. Just in case you are a little bit confused about this, uh, there's another video on this channel that explains a bit more about de-icing. So the link will be down in the description uh, below, and you should also be seeing that on screen as well. Just in case you want to go and give that a uh, watch. But generally, yes, we're pretty much all ready to go here, so we can uh, close all the doors. Now, once we've closed all the doors, as you can see here, that will activate the uh, checklist. So one of the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of the jetway. Uh, for us here it's sewed. And uh, I'm happy now to close all the doors. So what you want to do is you want to head on over to your doors page. And then we can get all these closed. Alright. And now what's going to happen is the checklist will commence. Before start checklist. Windows and doors. Closed and locked. APU. APU yep, on. That's running. APU bleed. That's on. on. External power. Disconnected and off. Cabin signs. Yep, they're all on. On and auto. Thrust levers. Idle. Parking brake. On. Bearer reference. Set. One zero zero seven. One, zero, yeah, zero, uh, the Q&H might have changed, so obviously it's very handy to check. Well, we'll just leave that as is. Beacon lights. Now, Set as you can on. see here, they're actually turning on the beacon lights. You're not actually meant to do that until you are actually pushing back. ABC. It's part of the uh, below the line item, Auto. so we're actually going to leave that to off for now. Checklist complete. All right, well, good for push and start. Now the next thing obviously you want to do is you want to make sure that you have got uh, your IFR clearance. Uh, we'll pretend that we do have it and the criminal score code of 0251. So we'll put that in. And obviously you also want to make sure you've got clearance for the pushback as well. Uh, let's just uh, pretend that we have. And quite simply uh, we can now go ahead and request the pushback. It's as simple as that. So obviously we'll let the tug connect and we'll let GSX go through their items. Now just in case obviously you don't want to use uh, GSX or that's not available, you do have an option, uh, you can hit start and push. Now as you can see that's not enabled for me and what you need to do in order to be able to enable that is there is actually an option somewhere, I see there, GSX services. So if you put that to no, then obviously uh, you Could can I have the aircraft uh, now, push back so itself we'll really. Back in just a couple of minutes. Confirm parking broker set please. Yep, brakes are set. So whilst obviously the ground crew are doing what they need to do, uh, we can <laughs> triple check a couple of things. So the Q and H is set. The, gear now. the autopilot panel is good. Uh, the MCDU is prepped, and we also need to make sure that we have the correct fuel. Today we need 12.74 is loaded, and how much do we actually need? Seven. Yeah, that's totally fine. Ready to push. Apron now clear. Release parking brake. Okay, we're ready to go. So uh, we're going to be starting engine. So beacon lights come to O N N. Sorry, O N. I don't know why I just said that. Um, we can get rid of the parking brakes. Parking brakes released. And we'll be going left Pushing today. Now. All clear for engine start. Okay, so the engine start procedure very very simple. You want to make sure that your bleed is on. Obviously uh, through the checklist, uh, already made sure that is. So we've got appropriate bleed air. 
So what you want to do now is you want to put the engine mode selector over to IGN start. The indication should uh, come alight. And then quite simply all you need to do is flick the starter master. Starting engine two. So generally you always start number two first. You want to confirm that your N3 is rising. You also want to confirm that your valve has been opened. And as you see there the oil quantity is reducing. And what this does, this measures the oil quantity in the actual tank itself. But then some of that oil is then transferred over to the engine obviously to keep that cool and lubricated. So that's perfectly normal to see that those indications go down. Now you see we've got fuel in the engine. So the EGT is starting to rise. The N2 is coming up, and we should shortly see the M1 come up as well. And we have positive uh, fuel flow indications. Yep, all good. And we have starter A there, as you can see. And the uh, starter valve has been closed, and the engine is now engine settling. Engine 2 is stabilised. There you go, and as soon as the engine is ready, the available light will come on. And quite simply, what we need to do is repeat the process for engine number 1. Starting number 1. So as you can see, the N2 is increasing, the N3 is increasing, the oil quantity is reducing. There we go, the EGT is rising, fuel is in the engine, fuel flow indications are coming up. N3 is surging, so is the N2. PSI is coming up, oil temperature is coming up. And obviously, confirmation for good engine start. Yeah, I see there the engine uh, engine number one M1 is coming up. I'll just wait for the available light. Engine one is stabilized. Yep. So we can now let the ground crew that we're all good. Uh, let let them know that we're all good, and they'll go ahead and they'll start to uh, disconnect. Right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to set the flaps. Uh, for me, sometimes I like to do a full cycle of flaps, as you can see there, just make sure everything's working okay. Uh, for me, I'm just going to set them to 1 plus F, which is our takeoff setter today. I'm going to put the auto brakes at max. Obviously, we don't need the APU anymore, so you can go ahead, you can switch that to off, turn off the master, and I'm eventually the uh, APU will uh, power down. So if you want to go ahead and monitor that, you can do. But surely what's going to happen is the checklist is going to go through the after start items. Speaking of after, after start, start items, checklist. we can turn on the weather radar. Engine mode selector. Yeah, you want to make sure that's back at normal. APU bleed. Off. Yep. APU master. Off. Ground spoilers. Yeah, you want to make sure they are armed for takeoff. Rudder trim. Clear left and right. Disconnecting now. Have a good flight. Bye bye. Bye bye. Pitch trim. So obviously, what's going to happen now is the um, automatically the pitch trim will be set for takeoff. As you can see, it's in the down position, so this might take quite a while. Pitch trim. Okay, I think it's got a little bit stuck here, so we'll just go ahead and we'll skip that. Flaps. Flaps one. Flight controls. Okay, this is a flight control check. Now, just a heads up, just in case we did have a problem with our flight controls, uh, it would come up on uh, the uh, status page. So really, uh, we don't actually need the flight control page for this. All this really is to check full free of movement. That's obviously our body's not interfering with the controls in any way. But it's always very good to actually have the panel up anyway. Because it's just that visual confirmation as well. So you always just start full out. Full left. Yep. Full left first. And we'll go full right. Full right. Neutral. And we'll go full up. Full up. Full down. Full down. Neutral. Then you want to rudder. test the rudder. Full left. And I also like to test the speed brakes as well. Full right. So quite Neutral. simply, just Check. put those out. 
Just want to make sure that only those triangles come up. And it's fine. Anti-ice. Off. So I'll just rearm the spoilers. Now for me, status. I won't even turn really on turn on Checked. the anti-icing if needed until we actually take off. Ecam door page. Checked. Hand signal. Received. Checklist complete. And that is it. You are ready to go. So I certainly hope you've enjoyed this column dot video and that you have found it informative. Don't forget, if you'd like to see more, make sure you go ahead and absolutely smash that subscribe button. It will be greatly appreciated. And, of course, do not forget to leave a thumbs up on the video as well. Of course, I will be bringing you more videos uh, in the future about the Aerosoft A330, detailing uh, a bit more about it. But uh, from me, the plain guy, once again, thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you next time.